32 is revised request for proposals, transit operations for regular route bus service. I pull this because Mr. Holter would like to make a comment. Mr. Holter, if that's okay with the council. Mm -hmm. Any problems with that? All right, Mr. Holter, yes. Is everybody no, okay with it? No objection. Mr. Holter. Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Um, Freeze. Maybe before Mr. Holter speaks, if it would be appropriate, I would like to uh, provide the council the latest update as to uh, the status of this RCA from the Federal Transit Administration. Okay. Uh, the mayor received a letter dated August 30th, 2011, which is in response to the city's uh, request for reconsideration of all previous documentations and finding uh, relative to the city's um, triannual, triannual review, which occurred in 2010. And in, in their request for reconsideration, the city requested that, that it not be required to competitively procure the um, services for the public transit service currently provided by Rochester City Lines until July 1st of 2012. Um, we made that request such because of the um, fact that the Public Works Transit and Operations Center building is not scheduled to be complete for transit operations until June of 2012. FTA had previously uh, denied our request. We appealed it again. They have compromised with us in the following manner. They're basically indicating that we have to issue an RFP for transit services immediately. We have to award a contract to the successful bidder by December 31st, 2011, so by the end of this year. That service provider must begin service on July 1st, 2012. So they have, in essence, supported what we requested, but their timeline is slightly different in the fact that they indicate we must award the contract by the end of the calendar year instead of December or March of next year, as we had proposed. So that's the current status. What that means uh, relative to transit service for the first six months of 2012 is that we will continue to negotiate as we have for the past almost 30 years now with Rochester City Lines for, the, for services for the first six months of 2012. But that service beginning July 1st of 2012 will be through a provider, possibly Rochester City Lines, that uh, has been procured through a competitive process. All right, Mr. Holder. Thank you. <clears throat> Just like to read something first. Uh, Ever since our starting the transit system in 1966, the city has always had a say in what we do. All routes and fares um, have needed city approval. Our franchise from the city was renewed every five years. Um, the city has never owned the transit system. We have had an annual financial contract, not a management agreement, since 1977. And it's called a transit assistance program. Um, the transit bid that we're talking about tonight was really born out of the sale of the city truck garage on 4th Street and the need for dollars to build a new truck garage. Um, there currently is not a management contract in place, which I mentioned. Um, so we. We've done what we're doing for four decades without question by the FTA. Suddenly when there's a new transit facility in place, um, something comes up like this. I think Dan is of the feeling that the transit system is theirs and, you know, the city owns the buses, I suppose. The commuter system is Rochester City Lines. The city of Rochester does own the buses and the dealing with the federal government is between the city and the federal government and we enter into a agreement with the uh, Rochester City Lines to run it. Uh, the agreement or that the, when the federal government came along and said we need to competitively bid it, that was not any dealings on our part to talk to the federal government and say, hey, you better tell us, if, if now that we got this new facility come along, we've got to competitively bid it. We didn't say that. We, in fact, have talk, tried to talk to the federal government about continuing our relationship. So we've had, I've had some discussions with Dan, I've had some discussions with his father and we have a disagreement on whether or not the transit system is actually Rochester City Lines and not the City of Rochester's. And I'm, 
don't know where to take it from there. Mr. Atkins, can that somehow be clarified if you go back and look into our agreements? It would be nice to know who owns the system. Well, it's pretty clear that the city of Rochester owns the buses mm -hmm. that are operated on for the on the fixed route system. Okay. I don't think that Mr. Holter would disagree with that. And we actually put in the money to buy the first group of buses with the understanding that after the useful life we would own them. And that was a uh, you know, third of a million dollars. And when the useful life was done, which we actually made the buses last twice as long as their uh, ex expected life, um, we ended up having to buy the buses back from the city. Well, so what, do you, what would you propose to do if the federal government is telling us we have to do this? Um, I just believe that there's not been um, adequate effort on the Department of Public Works to uh, encourage this federal to um, really see what is going on in Rochester. As far as? The ownership of the system. Because okay. I have documentation from the city that says we own it. Okay. From the city attorney to the Department of Public Works director. Both previous spots, but all with public ownership of the vehicles. Mr. Freeze? <clears throat> when we were first notified by the FTA of this requirement that we were going to have to secure the service through a, a procurement, competitive procurement process, uh, we offered, and, and Mr. Holter and his staff provided us res additional responses to, to the FTA, and we included every word uh, in our response that Mr. Holter and his staff had requested that we include in the response. Mm -hmm. So every point and every argument and every uh, debatable issue that, that was brought to our attention back when this first came out earlier this year, we have provided that information to the FTA. And I just read for you now what is their final decision. Okay. So where, where do you think it should go from here? I mean, the federal government, we all know that they do some unique things uh, in, in their departments. Uh, from what we understand, our hands are tied as far as we have to put it out for bid. Well, I don't believe the city's ever stated we own the business. We own the buses and we contract Transit for a service with Mr. that Mr. Holter provides. He provides mechanics and drivers. Through the competitive procurement process that we're required to go through, we'll be asking him, his company and others to provide us a proposal for 42 months for that same sort of service or actually 54 months, that same sort of service, drivers and maintenance of the buses. Um, we, don't, we don't proclaim to own his business. I do think the Holters would be free to run a transit system without any state and federal monies involved if they wish to do so. Who, but who, who with the state and federal monies come to a local government and we have to, and the local government's required to have the, an agreement with a provider. Who, who designs the bus routes? The city? city, the city staff, city uh, staff? In consultation with Rochester City Lines, okay. determines the routes. And it's been a collaborative effort for years. Okay. I have to. I'm a little bit confused on on, on one thing. I mean, the, the city owns the buses at this point. The city owns the right of way and the um. What it what it what is the other stuff that's in question right right here? I, I'm a little bit confused on that because. You know, there, there's a lot of talk of the transit system, and I, I don't under I, I I guess I don't understand between the the difference between the transit system and the buses and the right of ways. Is that well? There's a building downtown on First on First Avenue that uh, the city owns. It's got many businesses in it, but the city doesn't own any of those businesses. But they own the street and the sidewalk in front of the building and the yeah. building. Right, right, but I, I guess I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm. What I'm not understanding right here is, um, you know, what with the city owning the buses and the right of way. You know, okay, but we have a business here that we we established, right. we built from nothing, and, you have and now the city here. says that we it's the transit system. Now the city. Staff is saying, well, we own that system. I'm wanting to know when did they take ownership of it and when's the compensation going to be coming for the... Well, if the city owns the buses and the right-of-way, what else is there that would, there would be compensation for? Sir, we have many years of sweat equity building the system that's here. 
Well, I, I mean, this. So you're you're saying what you're you're saying that the city owes money for sweat equity in the business? Then I'm saying the city doesn't own the system. But I want to. And Mr. Holt, you're saying yeah, the, the city the, doesn't own the tra the bus transportation system, and that if somebody else comes in and the city would give that contract to someone else, we owe the Holters money because they've been here for forty some years running a system. I mean, and then the, the city should be responsible to pay them for that business that they run over the years, even though it's the city buses owned buses that they are utilizing, and it's state and federal money that covers basically 90% of the expenses. Mr. The rest of it's from fares or the city. Mr. Uh, the, but the city, you've never contracted with the federal government. Your contract's always been with the city of Rochester. There's been a, right, we cannot contract with the federal. There's so, been a, but it's never been a, uh, it's not a operations management contract. It's a financial assistance to keep the fares at the level that they're at. So are you losing money running the Rochester city? Yes, we are. Has that been approached and brought to the attention of the city to make that to recognize? City staff will differ with me on that. I, wh why, why would you do the business if you're losing no, money? No, it's something that we have built for years. Some businesses make money years and they lose money other years. At some point we knew this, the uh, government was going to run out of money um, and it was going to be necessary that we as a private operator would be right here continuing on doing what we're doing. I mean, you know, don't get, you run a great business. I mean, the way you run City Lines is, um, you know, it's outstanding, and I hope you continue in that role. I, I guess, from my standpoint, why would we not, um, you know, why, why, the, why should there not be competition? I mean, you're advocating for, for basically a, a socialized system where nope. there's no competition. <clears throat> I am not advocating that, not at all. Okay. I'm just saying that if you're saying you now own it, I want to know when it happened, that's the question. When did it change from a purchase of service? And what would be the purpose? I mean, why? what's the reason? Well, you if, if you have an apartment building, that you, you buy the land, you build a building, and you, you rent it out for years, it's, it's a, a, you have tenants come and go, and, and then after a while you say, well, I'm going to get Section 8 people in here. So there's Section 8 come, and, and you get assistance for new roof, new windows, new insulation. And uh, pretty soon there's a lot of government money put into that building. And then after a while, the, the government says, you know what? Um, we now own that building, but we're going to give you the chance to manage it. That's the way I feel with the bus company. It, what, what assets would the city, are, are there actual physical assets that you feel are being taken away from you in this? The transit system. The transit system yeah. is, I mean, what physical assets? What can I go out and touch oh. that's being taken away from you? Then no. this when you build a business, that is um, to develop customers, a large customer base, that's a pretty good asset. Well, the bottom line here is the fact that we're going to have to deal with that, but what we need to vote on tonight is the fact that we need to authorize the contract or to go out for bids, correct, Mr. Freeze? Yes, solicitation that, of proposals under the using best value procurement. So in the meantime, we will direct staff to, and the city attorney in particular, to investigate the legal implications from your side and from our side if there are any. But for tonight, we have to, according to the Federal Transit Authority, put out a request for bids on the maintenance of our, of our buses. And as this moves forward, I would suggest that Mr. Fries and Mr. Quenville and Mr. Adkins get together and talk this thing through and then get a hold of you. Thank you. You're welcome.